Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been watching my other videos, you know that I'm mainly working on all kinds of power sport equipment, including mobility scooters, uh, stand on scooters, ride on toys, ATVs, all kinds of power sport equipment that operated with batteries. Now on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install lithium ion batteries on your Geo Golf Mobility Scooter because they do come with a regular lead acid batteries. And this is a setup that you can buy for extra cost. This is your main lithium ion battery and big connector plug. That's how it's made between the battery and the charger itself. This is a charger. It's a heavy duty, fast charger, I would say, comparably to other chargers on the market. And this is the plug that you're going to install it on your Geo Golf. And this is a socket that connects to the outlet. So once you're going to connect this socket actual charger is going to detect batteries and it's going to start charging unless battery is fully charged up and you will not see charging mode right now it is charging and it's blinking with the two colors green and red which means that it is charging this charger has a fan on the top and plus it has a side indicator, charging indicator, just in case. So this is not a portable charger. You don't want to carry around. You want to permanently fix on your electric scooter. This gauge can be mounted anywhere you wish and I will show you on the, on the actual scooter where I mount it. This is a diagnostic port. This one stays disconnected. Now from the charger, you have two wires. Must be connected through this junction box, going to the battery directly. Battery has its own breaker switch, even though that you have one more breaker switch on a, on a uh, golf scooter, this must be there. Now, one more plug that is comes from this uh, battery pack. This plug is actually meant for two purposes. Purpose number one, you can have 65 volts output of this plug if you wish to connect to something else, like you have a special unique accessories that run in of 65 volts. Other than that, it is possible to charge through this plug and the factory supply you with this plug also, but I do not recommend to use it for now until you buy a dedicated charger with the same shape. You guys have original charger and it has exactly the same plug that would fit into this socket, but do not plug in into that because this is for lead acid batteries only. It will destroy your batteries if you will plug it in to this port. So better to unplug it and forget about this connection for now until maybe another portable charger will be available on the market because your original charger will not work with the lithium ion battery pack okay so i hope that we are clear about this unless in the future you can uh, if you are not going to use this this charger any longer you can cut off this wire from this charger and you can hook up this wire to those red and black wires and this way you can use it but this is there is no need for that because this heavy duty charger is going to be permanently installed on a vehicle and is good, doing a great job it's a good reliable piece very heavy duty Okay, well, you've seen the setup. 
Now let's take a look at the actual vehicle. This is how it's going to be installed on your vehicle after you remove your original lead acid batteries. Battery pack and the junction box. Now, as you can see, there is a two wires on one junction box and there is another wire, a red wire. This wire is coming from your breaker switch of the original breaker switch that stays here. After you will disconnect your lead acid batteries and remove them, you will have two wires, one red and one black. Only two wires will be left after you remove your lead acid batteries. So this black wire will go to those two black wires that that connect in battery and the charger and the red wire goes to those two wires that connects charger and the battery pack. So basically leftover wire comes from breaker switch go here and the leftover wire, black wire that comes from the scooter goes here. Uh, why I put this one to here? Because there was not much room in that junction box. It was more convenient for me. Okay. After I connected those, this wire is coming from the scooter, from the wiring harness loom. This is the only black wire that's going to be left, left over after you remove your lead acid batteries. And this is the only red wire that will be coming from underneath, will be coming from the breaker switch. Nothing, nothing really hard to understand. Connect them really well, make, it, make them tight and separate obviously as far as possible black from red wires. Now, as you can see, junction box will not close that easy. So I will have to tape it over as much as possible uh, with the electrical tape or duct tape. Remember that those bare wires, metal wires cannot be exposed and they cannot touch any of the metal objects, for example. For example, this and this. So if you don't have a shrink tubing, tape them over with the electrical tape so they will not be visible. That's why you see this electrical tape right here and right here. But if you have a shrink tube like this, if you're willing to obtain, you can, you can move it all the way to the end of the connector, heat it up and isolate, isolate on your end. Now, I think this is pretty straightforward. I connected, uh, I attached this charger with a screw, self-tapping screws. So it's gonna sit there permanently. Now this is where I install the this uh, charging indicator. It's going directly to the charger, just like just like on the on the floor, as you can see. Just going directly to the charger. It's only one special unique plug, so you cannot plug into anywhere else. There is only one spot. Okay, now this one, I left it disconnected, obviously, because I'm not going to use it, but I taped it over because I taped it over because I don't want any moisture or any other objects be close to those two wires. Otherwise, it's going to be short in the system and uh, yeah. You, you want to protect it, isolate it from any other wires and objects. So I left it unplugged and it is just sitting there. Now, power wire that go into the, to the back. This one. There is a gray connector that you did not see because it's behind the panel. 
I did not have, I did not remove panel. I just removed this service window and uh, I zip tied that gray plug underneath. Now, after this gray plug, there is actual plug, okay, like this. So, your scooter, obviously, going to have this plug. You need to remove those two screws and unplug this connector from your scooter. After that, you're going to have a small hole exactly with this shape of this plug. So you will need to make a bigger hole, bigger round hole, so you can insert this plug. So you can, uh, preferably if you leave this boot on, because this is protective boot, I like it. And uh, only four screws, just self-tapping screws going into that hole that you're going to make. This is it. It's a really easy conversion and uh, I don't think that anyone will have any problems with the connecting it. Let me show you how I'm going to secure battery pack. Okay guys, so this is how I secured that battery pack because there is no option to secure it just like a charger could be with a couple screws so ratcheting strap would be my preferred choice get yourself a regular ratcheting strap for five bucks and secure it from from underneath of the metal tray now this is how i secured with a zip tie that junction box that i've been showing you before so everything is going to be tight, everything is isolated from any kind of exposure rubbing against metal. I have two more shrinking tubes that I'm going to hit it. One here and one here. Anyway. And remember that now you have two breaker switches one on the battery pack and another one is still here this one was never removed one wire coming from this breaker switch a red one which is this one going directly to the red color wires between the charger and the battery pack so it must be there and if one of the breaker switches off either this one under the seat or that one on the back Obviously, your machine will not move and will not accept charge. Uh, this bundle of wires, I just zip tied it and left it over there. So it will not be touching fan, actual fan of the charger. This one is here. And now I'm ready to connect to the... You're going to see a red light here. And fan kicked in. Blinking red light, which means that it's charging and it's blinking red light here. When it will finish charging, it's going to be red color mode. This is it. I think this is one of the best setups that I've seen on the mobility scooters. I'm talking about the battery itself. By the way, let me show you the information about battery. So you know how powerful it is. And if you decide to upgrade your scooter. Okay, one more time. Charger goes to the plug that you need to make a round hole in the plastic and attach it to your back of the scooter and then this fast charger socket goes there from the charger it goes to connect to the battery pack and you have two more wires one coming from the breaker switch of the unit it goes here red color 
and another black wire that coming from the wiring harness of the original lead acid batteries goes here. Once you connect those two wires to this junction box, make it tight. Here everything is clear. I wrapped it so it's not going to be exposed to any moisture or it will not touch with the any other metal objects. Please forget about your original charger. Do not use it on your battery pack. Do not plug it in. So forget about this adapter that came with your lithium battery for now until it's going to be a portable charger one day on the market so you can plug it in directly if you wish so in case in case this heavy duty charger will ever fail which is i doubt that by the way nice future about uh, those chargers that all of them are uh, water sealed like i'm talking about this one it is water sealed and I'm assuming that there is a special fuse. Let me check. No, this is not a fuse. This is just like a plug. It's a, I'm assuming, ventilation plug, extra ventilation plug to release some moisture or, or hot air from the inside. So it's a breather. But charger does not come with any kind of fuses. So hopefully it's going to last pretty good now this one has a fuse and i have a separate video about how to reset how to change that fuse how to reset your uh, charger on your lead acid batteries okay i think this is a pretty simple setup it was not confusing for you guys if you're gonna replace uh, your lead acid battery with a lithium ion one I think you're going to have a pretty big difference in the performance and the uh, riding distance, especially. So, all right, stay safe, make everything tight, make everything isolated, make everything secure, so nothing is going to shift or jump up and up and down during the ride, and have yourself a safe trip. God bless you. God bless Canada. You. United States and Ukraine. Bye.